This is the 16th of October, 2019. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. Um, this is our 25 kilos of uh, sample, cassava, which we are going to rehydrate uh, in a drum that we're filling with water. We're in the uh, shipping area. And components being uh, ready for shipment. Work area, stew department down that way. We received two samples like this. Uh, the material is, we tested the moisture between 50 and 55 percent moisture. Mixing it in this water here. We've uh, put a lightning mixer on here, stirred the material up, and fished out uh, the first sample we're going to run. And um, this is extremely thin. Uh, we'll see if it works. I anticipate that it'll be too thin, it'll screen a blind, but um, we'll give it a try. Okay, we're going to uh, run this in a uh, CP4 press. see the screw and uh, the screen I'm using is a perforated screen, very small holes, got the discharge cone closed, going uh, 20 RPM. Go ahead, we'll see what happens. Okay, if that keeps up, we're in good shape. Okay, that's good. Just barely cover the keep the, the screw covered. Slowing down. Got a little leakage here. And it's uh, the screen has become blinded. It's not feeding. I think that's the end of this test already. Let me purge out what we have. And that purges out what we put in. And uh, now I actuate my discharge cone again. Close the door. Okay, we can uh, try again. That way I know for sure we uh, had solid going in. Same effect, that screen is remaining, remaining blinded. What I'm going to do is hit the uh, VFD in reverse. Run the press backwards there. It's running backwards. Give it a few turns running backwards. Hit it forward again. Now it's going forward. Reversing the screw did not unblind the screen. We still have uh, the same problem. Vincent uh, manufactures static dewatering screens, uh, but getting at them is a real problem right now. Here's the raw material these screens are made from. This is the sandblast area, and. Uh, what I've done is set up one of these screens. This one has slot width of about 030, uh, three quarters of a millimeter slot width. Okay. So we're stirring this up. We've already done one bale. And um, this is what happens. So this is simulating a side hill screen. Notice this one uh, has a flow direction arrow on it. Uh, it's a special wedge wire. 
but um, we're going to pre-thicken. You could do this on an industrial scale. Uh, it's a, a reasonable thing. Okay, we've uh, slowed the press down to um, 15 RPM. There's a chance this will work. I'm afraid more likely that it won't. But uh, your cassava is different than uh, other people's cassava, I've heard. And um, so we'll see what happens. I'm getting started here. Um, this looks better than it did before. That is, the, the liquid is opaque. I think it was clear before. So if it's got some fines in it, I'm squeezing, uh, squeezing it. And um, the press starts out as just a conveyor. It doesn't start squeezing until it's packed full. So right now it's empty. So I'll have water dripping out down here until this starts to open. You can maybe see some reflection there where it's trying to open. Um, the inlet hopper... Wow. Um, no action. I wonder what... Try poking it with a... Uh, there's a, a stick there. In case it's bridged. I wouldn't think it's bridged. Clear it at this other end, at the inlet, and see what's happened. That stuff wouldn't bridge. I'm getting a fairly steady action here. Um, we'll just give it more time. The uh, VFE set at 30. We'll uh, crank it up to 60. We'll double the speed. Yeah, Ben just reset the uh, VFD. So I've got the screw going a lot faster in case that makes a difference. Okay, I'm starting to get some action here. It's spitting. Uh, I don't know if you can see it spitting out. Uh, that's a sign that the screen is blinded over with a particle that is being wiped away uh, when the screw comes around. That's not necessarily bad. Uh, the plus it comes with a cover. Okay, I'm starting to get some cake be darned. Um, good, good. We'll see if we get enough to make it look justifiable, and if it does, we'll uh, start a time test to get our throughput capacity. Before I stop, see the action we're getting. I increased my air pressure to one bar, and the action in the inlet hopper uh, shows more action. Oh, we increased the hertz to 120 hertz. Uh, this, try poking down here. To, to, what's going on? Okay. Anyway, we're getting less of a flow. Not enough liquid coming out. Go ahead and turn it off. quite a bit of water out of this. Here's an example of bridging. And, um, okay, we modified the screw press, uh, took off the air cylinder, and welded on a couple of jacking bolts. The one on this side is uh, holding the cone open, a fixed orifice, and um, we're getting a steady gripping. We're running at 120 hertz, um, about 55 RPM, and uh, this is good enough to start a test. Okay, we're running a time test. Uh, not much press liquor coming out. I slowed down the press. It's channeling out of the other side. The channeling is uh, unavoidable pretty much with this. If I slowed down the RPM even more, but um, I want to see what that looks like. And now I'll adjust the speed again back to 120 hertz. See if 
if we can see a difference. I'm channeling out a lot more material, obviously, and getting somewhat more water out. Looking how soupy is the cake coming out. I'm trying to pre-thicken the cake so that it'll... Okay, I should do that. Set my speed way back down here. And see what that looks like. Starting second pressing, this is still some material left over from the prior run, so we can ignore that. Okay, we have started the second test here. Uh, this is the material from the first pressing, and um, we're feeding it in, getting a, a poor flow of liquid coming out. Uh, hard to say that would be enough to justify a press. We'll see with the moisture content. There's the uh, cake coming out. It's uh, channeling out the bottom, but then I don't mind channeling. It's that low flow of press liquor that bothers me. Pretty good slump here. That is, it's not that soupy. Well, that's soupy. Press liquor in our giant file here. Okay, if I collect a sample of plus cake, squeezing my hand. I can get some water to come out. If I squeeze it hard, if I squeeze hard, it's that. So this is pretty bad. Obviously, we've changed to a Wedgewire screen. Uh, this is encouraging. We just turn the press on. It probably won't last. But uh, we've got a little bit of air pressure on there. And that's more liquid. we got more fresh liquor coming out than we ever had. But who knows what we're feeding into it quite now. Uh, cake uniform all the way around. Jeez. The slot width is highly unusual here. This is the uh, first time we've ever run cassava with 150 microns. It's a slot width. Uh, we use that on alcohol, but uh, that's impressive if it keeps up. We'll see. This is going extremely well. We're uh, one minute into a time test. It's still good for fresh liquor. We're um, have a steady stream of cake. I'm channeling a bit, but I'm up too far. I take this cake. and try to squeeze something out of it. Okay, there's a drop, two drops, three drops. But uh, it's not like mashed potatoes anymore. Time test. Wow. A uh, minute 45 seconds into the test. Still going strong on press liquor. It looks any different over here. Not really. You have to bridge it, but a bigger diameter screw wouldn't uh, have that bridging effect. We'll see, we narrow down from eight inches here at the top down to four inches down here. We're uh, five and a half minutes into this test, running out of material. Well, you can see I still have a good steady stream of fresh liquor coming out. Um, I'm anxious to get these results. Uh, now the other samples were already in the oven. It wasn't until uh, later that we thought of doing this, changing screens. The 060 uh, 150 micron slot was 